Floridians are going to try to turn those April showers into May flowers and get this month started off on the right foot against the White Sox. April started off well, but the offense has fallen into a rut as the month closed out. Some early runs against the Pale Hose would help Danny Salazar as he vies for his first win of the season. Next on Sports Time Ohio. The Indians are back home at Progressive Field to open up a three-game series against their rivals from Chicago. It's the Indians and the White Sox right here on Sports Time Ohio. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. When the White Sox went into last offseason, they knew Paul Konerko was nearing the end of his illustrious career, and they needed a right-handed bat to step into the middle of that lineup. They took a gamble on a... Cuban import, Jose Abreu, and man, is it paying off early. Boy, it sure is. In the month of April, this big guy has really shown he can hit the baseball, hit it a long way. Uh, he proved to us because we were in Chicago. He can hit the long ball. He's got a very nice swing. It looks like he likes the ball away. He can hit the breaking ball. You know, he's one of those hitters you don't know how good he can be, but you can see the month of April he put up 10 home runs, 32 RBIs. Look at the cast right there that he is with with all those names. You know, the home runs in April and uh, since 19. 1920. That's a big month for him. Yeah, it's the best rookie first month in Major League history in terms of homers and RBI. Jose Abreu has been worth every penny so far for the Chicago White Sox. For the Indians, well, it's good to be back at home after that 0 for 6 road trip. Hopefully, the fireballer Danny Salazar can pitch the Indians to a win tonight. The play by play is coming up next. by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Panini's. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. And buy Jeep. Visit jeep.com to learn more.
Cloudy and cool here at the ballpark as we open up the homestand tonight. Indians and the White Sox will get started under cloudy skies and 54 degrees as Danny Salazar will try to pitch the Tribe to a series opening victory here tonight. Let's take a look at Robin Ventura's starting lineup for Chicago. It's brought to you by Toyota. Adam Eaton in the leadoff spot, followed by Gordon Beckham, then Jose Abreu, Adam Dunn, Diane Viciedo, and Alexei Ramirez off to a sizzling start, leading the league in hitting. Alejandro Diaz is seventh, Marcus Semi in eighth, and Adrian Nieto will bat ninth. GMC pitcher of the night will be Danny Salazar. Danny coming on for his sixth start. He's coming off a really good start in San Francisco. Certainly pitched good enough to win that ball game. He went seven innings, gave up five hits, and just the one run. But uh, that wasn't good enough. Uh, he had a no decision. It was tied. Jan Gomes hit a home run to get him off the hook. So he'll come back again. Now let's check the defense, the key of defense behind him tonight. It'll be Brantley in left field. It'll be Bourne in center, Rayburn in right. Avilas gets the start at third. Cabrera at short. Johnson is at second. Swisher is at first with Gomes behind the plate. Eric Cooper calling the balls and strikes this evening. Chris Guccione is at first. Pat Hoberg at second. And the crew chief, Tom Hallion, is at third. White Sox come in 14 and 15 on the year. Three games back of front running Detroit in the central. They are in third place. The Indians dead last in the division. 11 and 17. Five and a half games out. And trying to stop a six game losing streak. Danny Salazar's first pitch of the night is a fastball belt high for strike one. Adam Eaton has been a good addition to the Chicago club, and he showed why in their first meeting with the clubs when he went six for 14 against Indians pitching. Yeah, he really did a nice job. He had some excitement and some spark to the top of the lineup. Danny Salazar has him down on the count 0-2. And, and that fastball sailed high and wide. Now the 1-2. Another fastball, and that one just missed the mark. Four straight fastballs to Eaton to open the game. And another one fouled straight back. Yeah, I got to try and get that ball down a little bit. You know, in Salazar's last start against the White Sox in Chicago, that's the game where he struck out 10 guys in three and two-thirds innings. His pitch count got up so high at 93 <laughs> pitches, they had to take him out of the game. So one of the few guys that could strike out 10 in less than four innings. But he ended up giving up five runs. Another fastball, and it's high, full count. Everything is up yes. early here for you, Salazar. You see, in his last start in, in San Francisco, he had that fastball down in the zone. There were a lot of good low fastballs. So, I don't know, getting used to the mound or whatever, but he's going to have to get it down. And a 3-2 pitch is fouled back. Salazar is a guy who has piled up the strikeouts early in ball games. He has 22 strikeouts on the year in the first three innings of his outings. Again, the payoff pitch. And again, it's fouled out of play. So Eaton putting up a very good at bat here to start the ball game. Nine or more strikeouts. Five or more in earned runs yeah. in less than four innings right. pitched. Well, you see, there's a lot of recent guys. I mean, even you go back to 82. I remember Jim Beatty and David Cohn, of course, and Holiday. Well, he walks Eaton to start the ball game. Good at bat for Eaton to get on base. Nine pitch at bat, and he's aboard to start. Our keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Wipe April away. Yeah, wipe the slate clean indeed. We've already seen the key for Salazar try to keep the ball down. And, you know, I mean, 
the, the keys of the game are so tough to put up. We're putting the same stuff up every day because they have to do that if they want to win. Get a key hit. Keep them off the bases. Try and play from in front. Catch ball the ball. to Beckham. Yeah, I mean, defensively, we saw too many errors on the road trip. And everything, everything is magnified when you're not scoring a lot of runs. And when you average roughly two runs a ball game, uh, you can't afford to make no, any mistakes. No, you're not going to win. You're not going to win if you do that. Gordon Beckham was on the disabled list the first time these two teams met. Four hits and 18 bats in his last five games. Two and zero, and out goes Jan Gomes as Salazar cannot get the ball down to start. Well, you may want to slow him down a little bit and throw a breaking ball or something to get a feel for. It. You know where he has to stay behind the ball. Sometimes it seems like it's all been fastballs to this point. Mm -hmm. Even let him throw a changeup to get it down, but maybe slow him down a little bit. Everything up in the zone, and he wasn't like that in his last start. Two zero pitch, outside three and zero. So Salazar, with the light hitting, light hitting Gordon Beckham. He's 3-0, and and the big boys are waiting. Abreu, Dunn, and Viciato. Finds the strike zone. It's 3-1. and one. Well, let's see if he sends him off on this pitch. 3-1, he has been up in the zone, so maybe he'll wait till 3-2 if it gets to that point. But 3 1's not a bad running count. Good pitch. Nice pitch. And a full count now. I think because he was all over the place, he wasn't going to send him, but now you have to. Beckham didn't play the last series that, uh, when we were in Chicago. Eating good speed at first. And he takes off. 3-2, line to right center field. Born on a run. Has it skipped by him. Backed up nicely by Rayburn. He'll hold Beckham to a single. And on his way to third is Adam Eaton. Well, Michael, a good effort. He was not going to catch that ball. But you see, he did get a body on it and deflected from going into the gap. Rayburn had to come over and get it. Get it into second base. And hold Beckham to a single. That ball's right down the middle. And on the full count, he does it. He knew he wasn't going to catch it. You remember in Anaheim, that first hitter of the game got one by him and got a triple. Or the second hitter, I should say, it was Trout. But uh, Rayburn played it, holds him to a single, but it's first and third for Chicago. Chicago, the number one scoring team in the league with 154 runs. Second batting average. Third in doubles, third in homers. Offensively, they have turned it around compared to last year. They were last in the league. Now they're really swinging a well. In their last 11 games, they're averaging six runs a ball game and batting 286 as a team. And that's high ball one. Jose Abreu, a historic first month. Leading the league in homers and RBIs, extra base hits. You know, we heard a lot about him, but he really showed and demonstrated to us when we were in Chicago. He's a legitimate hitter. You have to make your pitches to him. If you hang him a breaking ball, he did some damage to us in that series when they tried to throw him breaking balls and they didn't get him down and away. To me, you have to crowd this guy. He's got to prove he can pull a ball inside. He can handle a ball away. We witnessed it. Oh, 
The 1-1. One, one. Good fastball. That was elevated above the belt, and Abreu could not catch up to it, and the count 1-2. and two. Well, watch this pitch in our Nissan pitch tracker. It's a fastball. It's above the belt. And you see he, was, uh, he swung under it. The ball, but it better be above the belt. Abreu's been hitting everything in sight. Last 12 games, hitting at a 360 average. But Salazar, a chance to put him away here, the 1 2. Threw it right by him. But the fastball was away. Good location, one down. Let's look at that sequence and, and see how he gets him. That was a fastball, and he had no chance of getting anything. There's one he throws right by him right there and followed that one up and went up the ladder a little bit and then went right away with a good fastball. When you're throwing at 94, 95, they better be ready for it. He needed that strike, and now he's a ground ball away from uh, getting out of the inning. Adam Dunn will be the hitter. Dunn's not a big ground ball guy. He has not hit into a double play this year. Well, you, you may say that all year long because he either swings or misses or hits it in the air. And Salazar is a fly ball guy. Yeah. He's not a ground ball pitcher. Well, maybe Danny in that sequence to Abreu has found his rhythm here. The 0-1. Oh, nasty off-speed pitch. First one we've seen tonight. And Dunn is down 0-2. Well, you get geared for that fastball, and beautiful. Now that's the equalizer for the hitters. Nice changeup, and it had good movement going down. Two-strike pitch. Up and away with a heater. Salazar, uh, hopefully he, he learns something every start he goes out there because everyone is different. You know, he's going back uh, against the White Sox, a team he has already faced on the air. He has, uh, he's won and won his career against them. Well, he said his last time out against San Francisco, he wanted to bring the guy who was here last year out to the mound with him. And to me, that meant power. Establish the fastball, pitch off the fastball. Maybe got away from that. In a couple of his earlier starts. I will agree with that. Good fastball. This could be two. How about First that? First one of the year, Adam Dunn grounds into an inning ending double play. White Sox, strand a runner at third. We'll go to the bottom of the first with the Indians coming to bat. For Terry Francona, brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne in the leadoff spot, followed by Mike Avilas. Nick Swisher will bat third. Then it's Carlos Santana, Ryan Rayburn. Great career numbers 
against the Chicago White Sox batting fifth. Michael Brantley is sixth, as Dribble Cabrera is seventh, Jan Gomes eighth, and Elliot Johnson batting ninth. John Danks is our GMC pitcher tonight, and Danks uh, off to a good start. He's 2 and 1 with a 348. He beat the Indians back on April 10th. He went six innings, six hits, three runs. He is 5 and 9 in his career against the Tribe. But uh, throwing the ball a little better. That shoulder is healed up. He had surgery a couple years ago. and Sky high pop. Gordon Beckham calling for it. One away. Take a look at the Kia White Sox defense. It'll be Deasa in left. Eaton is in center. Be Cieto in right. Simeon at third, Ramirez at short, Beckham is at second, Abreu at first with Nieto behind the plate. Mike Avilas. Well, that second tonight. Terry Francona having to juggle the lineup with Jason Kipnis now on the disabled list. And probably will miss up to a month. Line drive, base hit in the left field for Mike Avilas. And the Indians have a one-out base runner here in the first. Now the Indians coming off a road trip in which they didn't hit and likewise did not score. With more on that, here's Katie Witham. Well, it definitely was not the most fun that Terry Francona has had on a road trip, Matt. In fact, he looked relieved to be back home here in Cleveland. He did go on to say that he believes in this group, and he knows that these guys can dig themselves out of this hole. They just have to be strong enough to do it the right way, and it starts today. And, Rick, the right way, picking up on what Katie is talking about, is taking it literally a pitch and at bat and hitting yeah. at a time because as you said you, you can't win six games in a row in yeah. one night you've got to start with a good at bat and let that work off of it you know simplify things like you said just put up a good at bat when you when you're done with that bat grab your glove field the ball well out in the field yeah you don't, don't get ahead of yourself that's how you win one game and then you start going from there but this team has struggled in, in a lot of different areas there's no one point you can you can pinpoint to say let's go everybody has to really dig down and dig deep and while the loss of jason kipnis may on the outside appear to be a crippling or debilitating loss for a club that's already reeling it might be something that galvanizes the team really brings them together because you're losing arguably the best hitter on the ball club and so now they've really got to pull together to pick up the slack and sometimes out of adversity good things can happen nick swisher takes it down well, low two and one you look around baseball and there's been a lot of injuries there's been tommy john surgeries guys are out for the year you see some big name players that are already down and you have to fight your way that's the tough thing about getting through the year as a major leaguer that's why they say you need the 40-man roster. You need guys below. You see where your depth is at. And you see where you need help. Runner goes. It's up high. Throw it on to second base. Safe. Yes, he is. Mike Avilas with his fourth stolen base of the year. And he's providing some spark and some energy here right out of the gate. He had a great jump. He went on first movement. And against a left-hander, you're going to have to. And John Danks, there you see, he's about average. Flowers comes, or Nieto comes up to throw the ball, and uh, no, he did get the foot in there before the tag. Fourth stolen base for Avilas. Swisher takes ball four. Now Jason Kipnis sideline, as I mentioned, for up to a month, and he is the subject of our Here Right Audiology Sounds of the Game. Guys are going to pick it up for me. They know they are, um, and I trust that they're going to. I love the fact that we have as much depth as we, as we do on this bench. Um, it's really not a drop-off. These guys are great professionals about it, and uh, we, they're front line rooting them on. And um, This team has a lot of character and way too much character to kind of sink ourselves, to sink our own ship this early in the season or write us off this early. So I think we're going to be 
hopefully turn it around. I know everyone plays a little bit better when the calendar changes months, and hopefully that brings a good sign for our team. Well, Carlos Santana batting here with two on and one out, and Santana started to turn things around in Anaheim. Four hits against the Angels in the three-game series, including two home runs and six runs batted in. Yeah, and those homers, one from each side of the plate, that was a good sign. Danks is a guy, he's got to cut the ball into the right-handers. He's got that change up away, and he will flip a curveball up there at you. There's the cutter coming in, or slider. Two on, one out here in the first. Way outside, three balls and a strike. Santana with White Sox killer Ryan Rayburn waiting on deck. Line drive, left field, down the line. Fair ball into the corner it goes. Around third, Avilas will score. Swisher into third as Santana pulls into second with an RBI double. The Indians strike first, and they'll play from in front tonight as they lead it one to nothing. Fourth double of the year for Santana. His tenth run batted in, and now seven of those coming in his last four games. Huh? That's a good sign. We'll make this our McDonald's. I'm loving it. How about this? The first inning, he said one run in the last 14 games. They must have heard you talking because there's a double down the line. That'll get him one in the first. The Vils will come around to score. It'll set it up. Swisher is at third. Santana in the second with his fourth double. Tribe leads it one nothing. So Santana continues to heat up offensively. And now Ryan Rayburn with second and third and still only one out. Trying to hold up, but he went around. Rayburn, since the start of last year, has batted 323 against the White Sox. With 22 runs batted in and 19 games played. Well, yeah, he has more runs driven in against the White Sox than any other team he's played against in his career. It's always been uh, it's one of his teams. He just enjoys playing the White Sox, whether it's at home, wherever it may be here, or Detroit, or in Chicago. Lines it the other way, a base hit. Swisher will score. Santana around third. He'll score two. And Ryan Rayburn makes it a three to nothing Indians lead here in the first. All he needed to do was see the word socks on the opposing jersey. And the hit man comes through, breaking an 0 for 22 slump wow. as he continues to torture Chicago. Well, that's a nice way to break your slump. Not just the base hit, but getting two RBIs. There was the cutter. He tried to throw it in, and he put a good swing on it, going the other way. Didn't hit it hard. Placed perfectly. So Rayburn gets his fifth and sixth RBIs, and the Indians put a three spot on the board in the first. Boy, does that look good. Santana slipped on the plate there. Did you see it? Yeah. Looked like he was on ice skates. Now Michael Brantley. Takes low ball one. The Indians... Had scored one first inning run in their last 14 games. You heard Rick mention it just a moment ago. Such a key to their success last season when they were third in all of baseball in first inning run scored. Mike Avila starting it with the base hit to left. And then Santana and Rayburn with back-to-back -back RBI hits. Well, you would hope that now it would let Salazar go out and not relax, but give him a little breathing room. Our pitchers haven't had that opportunity yet this year. Brantley patiently waits. It's 2-0. and I'll tell you what, though. When they come out of the slump, and they will, Someone's going to have to pay for it. You know how that happens. When, you, when you're down for so long, you say, I don't want to be the team when they break out of it. It's, it's going to happen. And that did catch the inside corner, two and one.
Just a very fine mist falling here at Progressive Field. Two one pitch. Yeah, Danks looked like a changeup, didn't it? It might have been. You don't see a lot of changeups when a left hander's facing the left hander, but but they'll they'll throw it nowadays, and I don't blame them. There it is. It comes in, not afraid. 81 miles per hour. Well, look at that. Six runs allowed in the first in his sixth start. Three run first inning ties the Indian season high for runs in the first. And the, the other time they did it, not surprisingly, against Chicago on April the 25th. White Sox took three out of four from Cleveland when they met in Chicago. They got a dramatic walk-off home run from Alexei Ramirez. Otherwise, the Indians looked like they were heading for a split in that series. Now Brantley <laughs> serves it in the left field. Three straight hits here in the first inning. Four altogether. Nice piece of hitting there by Michael Brantley. Well, it, it seems like you get the one base hit, and it, uh, for whatever reason, everybody else seems to relax. Cooper going to go out and uh, take a walk out and have a talk to John Danks. Here's our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. In the first five innings, the White Sox have been outscored by 30 runs. But from inning six on, they are number one in baseball. Yeah, so they do the damage. They don't That's, go away. That, well, then keep scoring is what I say. Have yourself a couple of big innings in the first five. The misting rain continues here at Progressive Field as John Danks tries to work himself out of trouble. The Indians have three on the board, two will board, still only one out. And as Drupal Cabrera will be the batter. Going after the first pitch, fouled out of play. Well, this year so far, Danks with runners on, he, he was giving up a 196 average, which is outstanding. But tonight, the Indians are three for three. And he's done a much better job this year against left-handers compared to in the last two years. Missed inside to Cabrera, who's batting 286 against left-handed pitching. So from the right side of the plate, Cabrera has been swinging it very well. Down and in. Two balls and a strike. Three runs in. As you see the splits for Cabrera. Upstairs. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, they've got him on the ropes right now, and he is really struggling to try and find the strike zone. And like any good starter, you get him, get him early. He retired born, and then it was the Viela sit, a swisher walk, and then three straight hits. Yanked fouled on the left field line. He hit it hard, and then a 3-1 count, that's what you want to do, don't you? Exactly. You put a good swing on it. You don't get cheated. And you hit it hard somewhere, and that's exactly what he did. You look for your pitch. He got a nice pitch to hit. Cutter coming in. But you know what? Get it out of here. Put a good swing on it. Yeah, when you're out there and you're struggling, you're trying to get it out any way you can. He just wanted to give the old turnaround move to see if there was anybody running. They're not going to be running here.
Payoff pitch. Out of play. Tanks having to work extremely hard right out of the chute here. Closing in on 30 pitches for the inning. And Cabrera hoping to turn the screws on him another notch. Boy, what an at bat. Fouls it out of play. Rayburn at second, Brantley at first. And now the 30th pitch of the inning for Danks. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. And the eighth man to bat in the inning will be Jan Gomes. Well, and you can see John Danks. He's uh, he's fighting himself out there right now. Out of his 30 pitches, 16 strikes, 14 balls. And right now they got a chance to really put the hammer to him, man. I, I almost deliver a knockout punch. You get a base hit here. You know, there's point in time in games where if you can get a hit, you can do a lot of damage, and it'll go a long way right here. Just did catch the inside corner. Combs just recently had an eight game hitting streak. Popped up foul. That's out of play. And now Gomes will try to dig himself out of an 0-2 hole. Down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Rayburn scores. Here comes Brantley. Cabrera into third. It's a two-run double for Jan Gomes and a five-run first for the Indians. Double number four for Gomes, and he now has ten runs batted in on the year. Boy, did you see where they wanted that pitch? Yeah. Nieto, the catcher, came up out of the crouch. He wanted it up high, in and then up down low, and Gomes with that patented golf swing. Yeah, look at they're up there, letter high. He spikes it down and in, and that's Gomes' uh, alley. He knows it. That's a huge mistake. Rayburn went that way on a cutter inside, and you're starting to see the right-handers who have been struggling against the left-handed pitching that did the job last year get the hits in this inning, and what happens? They got a five spot on the board. For the second time this year, the Indians have scored five runs in an inning. And this one's sweet because it's right out of the chute on the heels of a six-game losing streak. Yes, it is. Boy, it couldn't have come at a better time. Now Elliott Johnson batting ninth. Infield in for the White Sox. And a strike. Chicago now getting action in their bullpen. Still only one out in the inning. I understand it's Michael Clayto who is getting loose in the Chicago pen, the right-hander. Might be a case where Robin Ventura feels like he has to go to somebody to just get the inning over. And then he'll think about long relief after that. Who knows? Well, I know he's hoping that Danks can get through this first inning. So the last thing you want to do is get your starter knocked out in the first the first game of a trip. Johnson chase one in the dirt, strikes out two down in the inning. But the Indians have batted around now as Michael Bourne will come to the plate for the second time.
Bourne started the game when he sent a sky-high pop towards second baseman Gordon Beckham. Then the next seven Indians reached base safely. Upstairs and inside, and Danks has missed badly on his location a number of different times in this inning. That time you could see Nieto setting up away. That ball came up and in. He's having one of those nights early. 40th pitch of the inning. And it's 3-0. and Boy, he's teetering, isn't he? 22-18. Call to strike. And it's 3-1. and one. You get the feeling if he doesn't get born, this might be it for Danks. Right-handed hitting Avilas on deck. Well, it's a 41-pitch inning right now. Popped him up. This should get him out of trouble. Coming in is Vicieto, and Eaton, Eaton, the center fielder, makes the catch. The Indians send 10 men to the plate. Five run first for the Cleveland Indians. Your Northeast Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today. And by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. The Indians with a 5 to nothing lead now as we go to the second inning. Diane Vicieto will lay off for Chicago. This and guy's the, off to a good start, huh? Yeah, the tank has been swinging it well here of late. Vicieto, in his last 12 games, has hit 432 with seven doubles. And he now is tied for the league lead with 11 two-baggers. Yeah, this guy, uh, I'll tell you one thing. The ball jumps off his bat. He's got great power to every field. Got overall, the top two hitters. Yeah, overall, they're right there. Danny Salazar finds the strike zone with a good fastball. This is, uh, again, now we've talked about it. And you've heard us talk about it every game. Anytime the Indians get on the board, you still want to shut down inning. I don't care if you put up five. Now is when you really want that zero. Good pitch.
And he walks the leadoff man for the second time tonight. Let's go downstairs once again and check in with Katie. Well, Matt, Rick, this year's version of the Rally Chicken was debuted at the ballpark today. As you can see, that's actually uh, Corey Kluber and uh, Cody Allen dressed head to toe in a chicken costume. Now, the two did it, obviously, to try to just keep this group loose, get them back in the right mindset. And, you know, I don't know, uh, start a rally, maybe. I'll tell you what, oh, uh, my. at least they're warm in those suits. Can we borrow them up here? <laughs> The rally chicken has taken on whole new meaning. Uh, yes. Alexei Ramirez takes a strike. You like a wing or a thigh? Uh, I'm a thigh man. <laughs> who says Corey Kluber doesn't have a sense of humor? <laughs> we were trying to figure out who it was out there. We couldn't do it. The 0-1. Swung out and missed. Took a little something off, and you could tell Ramirez was fooled by the pitch as he steps away well, with this a guy, wry smile. He started the year off as hot as you can. What did he hit in his first 16, 17 games? 17 in a row. Set a White Sox record. Yeah. He was uh, on fire. He ended up ending the game on a home run when we were there. The last game of the four-game series. Popped we, it foul out of play. And we said at that time, this guy likes the the fastball middle in. He can turn on it. You have to make good pitches. You have to keep him honest and go in there, and he will chase breaking balls away. Let's see what Salazar does now. He's got him right where you want him, Viciedo, not much of a runner, no steals on the year. Fastball ran it in and got it in deep. I like it. And, it's 0 and, and he's two. still able to hit it. You know, even though you're down two, you think some hitters would look away maybe for something, but he was able to do something to just get that fastball out of the inside part of the plate. Weekly bounce to third. Avila's going to go to second. There's, oh, they didn't get it. No out. Johnson never had it in his glove, apparently. Trying to be too quick. There's an error. Terry Francona's going to come out and check, but Johnson didn't offer any argument, so I'm kind of under the impression that he never had it in I, the glove. I don't think he did. He was trying to be too quick. Let's see. We'll take a look at it on the replay. No, I don't think he did. He didn't have it out. Of, he did not secure it in his glove. At least in my opinion. No. Do you think he was transferring? Wow, that's a. T I mean, that's that is right on the borderline. It's in the glove, but what is control? I don't think he had control, and I think it's probably a good non-challenge there. I just, you know what, I just think he tried to get a little too ahead of himself and too quickly. Live what, speed now. No. That's not a catch. And they changed that rule, so it certainly wouldn't have been a few weeks ago, and I don't think it is now. So it's an error. And now two on, nobody out for Alejandro De Aza. Diazza, one of the few hitters in the lineup, struggling at the outset. Popped out of play, though his 
He's Four always... home runs equal his home run total from all of last year. Yeah, but you know, when, when guys are struggling, this guy has always played well against us in the past. He's always seemed to get big hits and play very good against the Indians. There are the numbers yeah. to back it up. There you go. He's one of those Ryan Rayburn type players. Mm -hmm. You know, Rayburn does it to the Sox. Deasa does it to the Indians. Line to left to base hit. And around third coming home is Vicieto. And the White Sox immediately come back and answer. And obviously the air plays well, a part in it. Lead off walk. And then the air. And so you, you don't get a shut down inning. And now he's got to work. He's still trying to get the first out. And there's Deasa, gets the fastball away, stayed on it, put a short stroke on it, gets the base hit to left field. So the White Sox come right back, and they're on the board. Marcus Semien. White Sox third baseman. Connor Gillespie on the DL. Semien pops one in the air to center field. Michael Bourne calling for it. And that'll be the first out of the inning. Oh, man. Ramirez bluffed to move towards third base, and then. You know what? He tricked Bourne. Bourne, he was going to, he looked like he was set up for third. He was going to uh, jockey him to go to third base, and Bourne threw behind him. He was going to keep the double play in order. But Ramirez really had no intentions of going to third. I thought Bourne was going to throw a third because he shouldn't have been able to tag on that ball, and I think Ramirez realized it. Look at it's fake. Yeah, he just wanted to make him draw to throw. A little did he know it was coming behind him. <laughs> White Sox catcher Adrian Nieto. This is a key guy in the inning for Danny Salazar. Nieto just two hits in his last twelve at bats with five strikeouts. Well, that pitch looked pretty good, but it's now 2-0. Oh. And a line drive base hit to right center field. Coming around pitch. third, Ramirez will score. On his way to third is Deaza. And the White Sox have scored twice now here in the second inning. Well, number nine hitters uh, are five for ten. Five for 11 off Salazar now. And a 2-0 count, I mean, it, the hitter has no doubt Salazar is coming with the fastball. He got it down. They get the base hit, so... Another base hit. It's five to two. Nieto gets his first RBI on the season, and Mickey Callaway is going to go out and have a talk. So not what uh, Salazar wanted to do after the Indians go out and put five on the board in the first. Well, the good news here early is that the Indians came out swinging the bats tonight. Scoring five runs in the first. The bad news is the, the mental mistakes, uh, not mental mistakes, but the errors and the response runs, a problem that has plagued them early this year, continues. And obviously, at times, they go hand in hand. Yep, they sure do. The leadoff walk didn't help. Adam Eaton with a walk his first time up. Matt, this is where if you did this to the White Sox last year, score five in the first, they were pretty much done. You know, they they didn't have the fight in them, especially in the second half of yeah. the year. Right now, they're playing with a lot of confidence, and they don't care if they're down. They feel like they can score. They know they can put, get runs on the board, so they don't feel like they're out of the game. 
And they're going to keep coming at you all game long. Like we said, they're better off in the second half of the game than they are the first. We might be here at 12 o'clock tonight, the way this game's going, the way they're hitting, they're scoring. They're... The first inning was clocked at 35 minutes. Well, we're not even halfway through the second. We could be right there. And Adam Eaton gets caught looking. Second strikeout for Danny Salazar. Two down here in the inning. Well, there's that fastball right on the outside edge. He gets a call. Eaton didn't like it. But uh, Danny's thrown a couple on the other side of the plate. He didn't get the call. And he gets it here. So that's out number two. Well, assuming Jan Gomes was set up on the plate, his glove never moved. Gordon Beckham, a base hit his first time up. Man, a good fastball. And actually an off-speed pitch in there for strike one. That one got away from Gomes, crossed him up, and scoring is Diaza. Yeah, so obviously a... there was some miscommunication there. Yeah. Third run of the inning for Chicago. A gift run at that. Yeah. It, it's almost like he didn't know what was coming. I think it hit him in the shin guard. I don't know if it even hit the ground. Watch this. Oh, he got locked up. Maybe he forgot what he called. I don't know. But I didn't see him go out and talk to Salazar, so that was weird. That's uh, That's got to be forgetting what you call right there, I think. See, he went backhand, and he, he tried yeah. to turn, and he, he didn't know how to go at it. Well, Gomes obviously disappointed, frustrated, like so many on this Indians club, but Two defensive miscues in the inning, and they have directly led to two runs for Chicago. And they're right back in it. Two and two. Fastball locked him up. The inning is over. Salazar gets his third strikeout. But the White Sox come right back with three in the second to close to within two runs.
Bottom of the second inning. And the Indians with a 5-3 lead for the Tribe here in inning two. Mike Avilas, Nick Swisher, Carlos Santana coming up. Mike Avilas started the Indians rally in the first when he yanked a single to left field. Stole second base after that. Swisher walked, scored on Santana's double. Avilas in there at third base tonight. Figures to see some time perhaps at second base with Jason Kipnis out. To left field. Back goes Diazza. Still going back. Jumps up and makes the catch. One away. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. In addition to Jason Kipnis, the Tigers signed Joel Hanrahan, who's currently on the DL. Bruce Chen down for the Kansas City Royals, and Manny Machado. Is now off the DL for the Baltimore Orioles. Nick Swisher drew a walk and scored in the first. Pop to center. In comes Adam Eaton. Two down. Well, follow every Indians game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Uh, get live look-ins, instant replay, audio, scores, the free MLB TV game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Indians.com. Rick, I'm sure back in your playing days you had at bats like Swisher did right there. You're telling yourself something, whether it's weight back, do this, do that, and Somehow your muscles react and you do exactly the opposite of what you wanted to do. And you could see he was talking to himself all the way back to the yeah. dugout. I mean, there are times where, you know what, you talk yourself right out of an at-bat. Or you know what you would call them? You give at-bats away. And that's what you try to minimize the longer you get in this game is you don't give any at-bats away. You try to put up quality at-bats, and sometimes it just doesn't happen. Santana puts a charge into a ball. Deep left field. Gone to Souvenir City. Santana's fourth home run of the year, and they're starting to come in bunches. His third home run in the last four games. And the Indians answer right back. Yes, they do. That's and good. They lead it now six to two. Six to three, excuse me. Well, he put a nice swing on this one. They want it down and away. It's up. And out over, and he gets great extension. Nice swing. His third home run in the last four games. That's beautiful. I think that guy with the beer almost caught that in his beer cup. Did he really? I think it skimmed right over the top of his beer cup. We might get another look at that at some point. But Carlos Santana with a double and a home run already tonight. That is a terrific sign. Watch one more time now. Guy with the beer puts it up in the air like he's going to catch it with a beer cup. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he almost did. They, he's looking at his well, cup. Where'd it go? He lost about three quarters of his <laughs> beer, but I'll tell you what, it's a nice try. You know, like a player sometimes will look in his glove. Where? Why isn't it in there? <laughs> he's looking in the beer. <laughs> nice effort. Ryan Rayburn drove in a pair with a base hit his first time up. Takes the ball inside. So John Danks looked like he was going to cruise through the inning until Carlos Santana took him deep. It's 
It's only the second home run given up by Danks. Payoff pitch. Ball four. So they'll keep the heat on Danks here in the second inning. And Michael Brantley coming up. Brantley single to left his first time up. Michael now four hits and 16 at bats in his career against this left hander John Denks. Bouncer towards second base, and Beckham will throw him out. But the Indians come right back. Carlos Santana sends one deep and out of here. The Indians lead it 6-3. to three. Stipe Miosic, a former baseball player at Cleveland State and an EMT in Valley View right there in the foreground. He's at the game promoting a UFC fight night. May 10th at U.S. Bank Arena in Cincinnati. It's at 10 o'clock on Fox Sports 1. Miosic's next fight is May 31st in Sao Paulo, Brazil against Junior Dos Santos also on Fox Sports 1. So if that guy were to stand up in front of you during the ball game, you might not want to say, hey, down in yeah, front. Yeah. <laughs> if you do, say, please. <laughs> he might pound you down. <laughs> Jose Abreu struck out his first time up, and he checked on that pitch. He swung at that same pitch first time up. Well, he's going to make him get the ball down now. That's a fastball where you, it looks good, Matt. You're not going to catch up to it. But if you're a good hitter, you're going to just spit on it.
Well, on the eve of the Kentucky Derby, we we know that it's not how you start the race, but how you finish it that matters most. However, for Jose Abreu, his 32 RBI through his first 29 career games are the most in White Sox history and tied with Joe DiMaggio, Ted wow. Williams, and Albert Pujols for the third highest RBA I total in Major League history. Well, you talk about uh, getting off to a good start. How about that mm -hmm. for a start? Nice. Wow. Danny Salazar pulled the string on Abreu and strikes him out for the second time tonight. Watch the change, Jeff. After he pounded him with fastballs, and then the next thing you know, that one uh, it just never gets there. And it was in a good spot, down and in. He's been swinging at that fastball away. Good pitch by Salazar. Strikeout number four. You know, I mentioned it when Danks was on the mound through a change up to a left-handed hitter. There's a right-handed pitcher throwing a change up to a right-handed hitter. You know, the Tiger staff does it all the time now. You know, the Tigers pitchers, I've noticed in the last couple of years, they're not afraid to throw change-ups to the right-handers. As a matter of fact, they throw a boatload of them. That's a, uh, the change-up is a, uh, you know, a pitch that the, the, the Oakland staff throws a lot. The Tampa staff, they'll throw that fastball change-up. And, and I like that pitch because you don't hang them as much. Hanging sliders go a long way. 13th batter of the game, already the fifth 2-0 count. For Danny Salazar, he comes back and throws one by Dunn to make it two and one. Uh, and a good fastball. That one, as you like to say, had some hair on it. Well, Dunn got a couple of really big hits. That was right down the middle. He just, uh, you get, if you keep it down to him, he's going to take you. He put a good swings when we were in Chicago. He had a double down the left field line on a pitch down. He loves the ball down. You can pitch him, uh, who was it that threw him three straight fastballs on the outside part of the plate and just and it, it elevated a little. It was mid-thigh uh, mid or above. And Cody just, Allen, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, might have been. No, it was Kluber. First time up, one, two, three, and then he, then he missed the second time, and it was down, and he hit him. Danny Salazar takes a little something off after the high heat, and he has struck out four consecutive White Sox hitters now. Here's our great clip of the game from earlier this afternoon. Cleveland Association of Broadcasters giving uh, my pal, my partner, Rick Manning, the award in excellence for broadcasting. Well deserved. Thanks, nice man. job. Thank you. Nice job for you presenting. Very well. Table for one, my friend. Short and sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always better when it's short and sweet. Nice job, though. That was a very that nice event. They did a tremendous job over there, the cab. Our pal Mike Snyder also being awarded tonight or this afternoon. Chopper to third. Mike Avilas cuts it off and throws him out. And the White Sox go one, two, three. A very good response inning from Danny Salazar.
The Indians lead it 6-3 to three as we go to the bottom of the third. As Drupal Cabrera to lead off and a breaking ball down low. Cabrera walked his first time up. Swing and a miss by Cabrera. High fly ball, center field. Eaton is under it. And he makes the catch. Boy, I don't know if he misjudged that or maybe lost it at some point. But he does make the grab. First inning, the Indians came out swinging. Carlos Santana with an RBI double. And Ryan Rayburn goes the other way, plating a pair. And three batters later, Jan Gomes digs one out to drive in two more. Boy, there's nothing wrong with the opposite field, is there? Boy, guys go that way, and it seems like there are a lot of base hits the other way. Is that off the back foot? Looked like it was. Watch this. Now that's letting it get deep in there. That's a cutter coming in. That's oh, off his yeah. back knee. That didn't even hit the foot. That got the knee. Mm. That couldn't have felt too good. To first base, it's a fair ball. Gomes on his way to second base. Viciato's throw, not in time. And how about Jan Gomes? Hits one off his knee, then squibs one inside the bag for a double. He's two for two with two doubles already tonight. And both hits coming down the line, man. There it is. He's trying to go hit. <laughs> that was a cue shot. Look at that. That I mean, that's when you get hits like that. That's beautiful, and it ends up being a double. You know he was going to have to run after falling one off his knee, and has to slide in, but he'll take it. A double. Gomes two hits, two doubles tonight. It's their third double. They have a home run. Elliot Johnson struck out his first time up. Ground ball deep at short. Ramirez, tremendous arm, throws him out. Two away. Well, Tuesday is election day, and your vote matters. Vote yes on issue seven. Issue seven is not a tax increase, but it helps keep Cleveland strong. Don't forget to vote yes on issue seven on Tuesday. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. Bourne has popped up on the infield and fly to center. Hits a little cue shot off the end of the bat, but it will go foul. Indians with those five runs in the first, the Carlos Santana home run in the second. Now trying to cash in on the Jan Gomes double here in the third. Michael Bourne has a hit in nine of his last ten games. But he's got to try to dig himself out of an 0-2 hole here. The 
Didn't want to throw him a strike to see if he could get him to go chase after one. Wow. Tell you what, Nieto has had to move around a lot behind the plate here tonight. He sets up the target away, and that ball came back in. Yeah, command has been a little bit of an issue for John Danks. First time up, they wanted a ball up around the letters on Gomes. A member was down around his ankles, and yeah. he gave up that double the first time. Well, you know, pitchers will tell you, sometimes you go out there, and for whatever reason, you just can't throw it where you want to. You got the target. You're aiming for it. The ball comes out of your hand, and it doesn't end up anywhere near where you yeah. hoped it would. That's a bad feeling when you're a pitcher and you're trying to throw it away and it goes back inside. 2 2 count. Born with a liner towards center field, dropping a base hit, coming around third. Gomes headed for home. He will score. And the Indians have scored in every inning here tonight. And they now lead it 7 to 3. Born with RBI number four on the year. And he is hit now in 10 of his last 11 ball games. Boy, we're seeing some things we haven't seen in a long time from this offense. Now comes a two out base hit and lefty on lefty. He, he got it up uh, waist high. Belled high and he gets enough of it to bloop it in. And when uh, two outs, Gomes is ru running right off the crack of the bat. He scores easily with no throw. So they have seven runs here. Up and away. Ball one to Mike Avilas. Avilas singled and scored his first time up. And then leading off the second, he sent Alejandro Diaz to the wall in deep left field. The left again, Diazic will make the catch to retire the side. Michael Bourne bloops one in. Gomes scores 7 3 Cleveland.
Indians lead it. Fourth inning now, and Alexei Ramirez to lead off for Chicago. First ball swinging in the air to center field. Michael Bourne can't get to it. And it drops in for a base hit off the bat of Alexei Ramirez, who's had a slew of those already this year. He had 40 hits in the month of April, a White Sox record. Well, that ball was just seemed to be dying on him, man. It was just slicing away from him. You see, he thought he had a beat on it, and that, that thing just wasn't hit hard enough. There was no carry to it, and it just kept sinking and right out of his reach. You can see he's up. When you run that far as an outfielder, you want to catch the ball. You don't want it to drop. It upsets you. Alejandro Diaz, an RBI single to left his first time up. That snaps a string of five in a row set down by Danny Salazar, and he had struck out four straight before Diane Viciedo grounded out to end the third. Off-speed pitch. Changeup's been great for him. The fastball changeup mix for this guy, I think, is really good. A couple times he got into, you know, he wanted to throw fastball changeup, sliders, sliders. You know, that get a feel for a fastball changeup, and his changeup has been going down really well tonight. Up the middle, and that's through a base hit. Ramirez will stop at second. And back-to-back -back singles for Chicago to open the fourth. Deasa, he sees the uh, Tribe uniform. He's two for two. Yep. This ball uh, made him do a little dance out there on the mound. It comes right back up. Check it out on our Wendy slow motion replay. Get the foot out of the way. See, he was afraid to put that glove down. He didn't know where it was going. And I would imagine as a pitcher, you think that ball's coming about twice as fast as it really is. And I can't blame them. They're about 55 feet by the time they're having to make a, a move on the baseball. Marcus nice. Semyon takes a look at an off-speed pitch for strike one. Semyon swung at the first pitch, first time up, and fly to center. He was playing second base when we faced the White Sox earlier this year with Gordon Beckham's sideline. Now filling in a third with Connor Gillespie on the DL. Maybe two here. Cabrera. One. To game. Johnson. He dropped it again and he's safe again. Oh, my. That is the exact same thing. That's when you said it might be a double play, I said get one first. You can't rush and you can't try and do something that you've got to get one at a time. He hasn't been playing there on an everyday basis. I don't know what's going on, but this can't happen. There's the one. It's a good throw. It's a good feed. And the exact same thing happens. And so now they have the bases loaded. Unbelievable. That has got to be one of the worst feelings in the world right there. Oh, yeah. You want to crawl. I'll tell you what. If he had a shovel, now he'd dig a hole and crawl in it. Wow, and now Salazar's in trouble. Base is loaded, nobody out. Adrian Nieto's RBI single his first time up, takes ball one. Well, what this what it does is when you don't get the out, it, you still would have had a double play opportunity. Now you're making your pitcher throw that many more pitches and work that much harder to get through the lineup, and you had a nice, comfortable four-run late. Well, he's got to really work hard now. If I remember right, this was the same situation the last time Nieto was up. He had a 2-0 count. Yeah, fastball, you're and he right. singled in the center. Absolutely right. He had a 2-0 count. Now that's the case in point. You start overthrowing. You think you have to do more than what you're capable of. And... Uh, you really don't have to. Mm -hmm. 
Bullseye, three and one. Three one pitch, swing and a miss. He blew it by him. Nieto wasn't going to get cheated. No, he didn't. But he couldn't catch up to that 94 mile an hour heat. Well, let's see if it was in the zone. Oh, yeah, it was a strike. He challenged him, threw it right on the outside part of the plate and said, Get after it. He tried to pull it. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. He threw it by him for the strikeout, his sixth of the night. That's the first out of the inning. And now we go to the top of the order. Well, he's not messing around. Let's go. My best. There it is. Let me see you hit it. He comes up empty. Strikeout number six for Zalazar in the first out of this inning. Adam Eaton has walked and been called out on strikes. And it's a little bit high for ball one. Back out of play to even the count up. Eaton, the Springfield, Ohio native. Slashing it foul again, and now Salazar ahead in the count of ball and two strikes. Bases loaded, one out, the one-two pitch. Weekly hit to short. Cabrera steps on the bag, goes to first. Double play to end the inning. Danny Salazar picks himself up, and the defense picks him up as well here to end the inning.
Enjoy a cold one on this Friday evening. The stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Well at the end of the inning there Adam Eaton who grounded into the double play came out of the ball game and Jordan Danks goes into center field. Eaton missed five games a week ago with a uh, knee problem. And I wonder if maybe aggravated it going well, down the line there. I, he must have because I saw him hobbling going down that line. So uh, he very well could have. Nick Swisher to lead off the home half of the fourth for Cleveland. He has walked and scored tonight. Back out of play. Watch him go down the line, Matt. He reaches for it, and right there, you have something that's bothering him. He's hobbling, pulls up. Breaking ball, and Swisher able to lay off two and two. him straight up. First baseman Abreu. One down. Tweet your photos to us by using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have it shown on an upcoming ball game. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Santana takes again, two and one. Outside corner. Strike three called. Second strikeout of the night for Danks, and there are two down here in the fourth inning. Back in the first inning, Ryan Rayburn snapped an 0 for 22 slump with a line drive single to right field, plating a pair. He walked his last time up. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to get him going. Hit him on the bare hand. And he saved it. So Beckham. Hit. And Beckham throws him out. So that'll go 1 4 3 on the put out. As the Indians go 1 2 3 for the first time tonight.
tonight. The all-new Sunnyside Chevrolet in Illyria. Sunny will save you money. Buy Levin Furniture and buy Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. Seven three Indians lead it. As we go now to the fifth inning, Gordon Beckham is one for two with a single. One and one to count, or make that uh, two and zero. Oh. Beckham five for 20 now in his last five games. As he tries to round himself into shape. Bounce to short as Dribble Cabrera gobbles it up and throws him out one away. Now well, the Indians want to congratulate Playhouse Square on a dazzling transformation tonight. Our friends down the road on Euclid Avenue are celebrating the lighting of the GE chandelier. It's the world's largest outdoor chandelier with a special lighting ceremony this evening. Live entertainment, much more. Lots going on there in the Playhouse Square neighborhood tonight and every night. We take advantage of that during the offseason. There are so many great Broadway shows that come to downtown Cleveland. Well, that'll be hopping right uh, in a little bit right down there. A little there. bit like Times Square, huh? Yeah, well, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as cold as it is on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I'll bring you a big swing and a miss. He has struck out twice tonight. Fast ball away, and Abreu lays off two balls and a strike. Right back, even up two and two. Abreu backs away for a minor adjustment. He's another guy so big and strong when he steps into the box, you can see that that bottom hand, he might have two fingers on the bottom of the knob. Yeah. The bottom two fingers are, are probably off the bottom of the bat. I think that's why a lot of guys use shorter bats nowadays, too. Breaking ball hit high in the air, and I mean a ton. Down the line, and goodbye. Jose Abreu with his 11th home run of the year. How's that for power? RBI number 33. It's the second home run he's hit off Danny Salazar this year. No, well, that's the sixth home run given up by Salazar. Change up, down and in. He got him the other time to swing at that ball, and he swung over the top. Guess what? He doesn't this time. He brought his hands in and hit it. I mean, that ball was high down the line. He knew it as soon as he hit it. He was just waiting for that thing to drop out of the orbit. <laughs> the ball's coming back down onto the field of play, so time is called. How do people do that? I have no idea why they throw a souvenir back onto the field. Nieto's asking, well, what was that? Was that a splitter? 
could see him motioning. Yeah, that's a change up. Fastball and a little bit outside. Well, after you, uh, you hit one like that, people come up and ask you what the pitch was. After he <laughs> swung and missed the pit time before, they didn't, never even walked up to him. That's not a good teammate. Get away from me. Be consistent. <laughs> Now oh, you punched out. I'm not going to ask you what it was. I'm going to wait till you hit the homer. Again, Salazar, a guy that uh, he gets a boatload of pitches in a hurry. 26 in that second inning. 90 pitches. He's, he's like a five-inning guy. You know, he needs to have some innings during the course of a game that he can get on 12, 13 pitches because he gets a lot of swing and misses. He will get a lot of swings and foul balls, you know, where they, they just fall off that high fastball and you got to throw again and throw again. You'll see a lot of 9, 10, 11 pitch at bats. Well, I think back to another power pitcher I remember early in his career, CC Sabathia. When it was a lot of fastballs, you got he a just, lot of foul balls because yes. they couldn't square them up. Bartola Cologne. Yep. Full yeah, count. Types of hitters like that, that that do that to a pitcher, especially a young pitcher, I think it, it, it sometimes it gets a little frustrating. Then you have a tendency to start overthrowing the, the baseball. There have been 10 White Sox batters tonight, Matt, that have seen five or more pitches. Out of so play. that puts you d deep into the game anyway. Or deep into your pitch count, I should say. Now Mark Zubchinsky getting loose. Salazar closing in on 100 for the night. And the payoff pitch to Dunn is ball four. Time now for a Mazda game break as we go back to the studio in Al Pulaski. Matt Rick in New York tonight. The Rays increasing their lead for their ace, David Price. Here, Desmond Jennings in the fifth inning hits his third home run of the season. It's a solo shot to give the Rays a 4-2 to two lead. They're now in the top of the sixth. The Rays up by that two-run margin. Matt? All right, thanks, Al. Here's Mickey Calloway coming out for the Indians now to talk with Danny Salazar as Zipchinski continues to get loose. A couple of right-handed hitters do up here, Viciedo and then Ramirez. Uh, two of the best hitters they have in that lineup coming up. Indians led this game five to nothing after one, and then the White Sox scored three. The Indians have since answered with single runs in the second and third innings. And now the Sox back on the board here in the fifth on the solo homer by Abreu. But one on, one out, and now Diane Viciedo, who is 0 for 1. Almost stayed fair. It was close. Another roll of the baseball forward, and Gomes has an easy double play to end the inning. But it just rolled backwards into foul ground. Salazar has a couple of double plays behind him tonight. He could use another one right here. Interesting in that Adam Dunn, who ended the first inning with a double play ground ball out, first time he'd hit into a double play this year. And then Adam Eaton did the same thing in the fourth, first time he had hit into a double play. And he ended up leaving the game after that as he was hobbled going down the line. Viciedo has hit into two 
double plays so far this year. And he's one of those guys that tends to hit the ball very hard. So if he hits it at an infield, there's a good chance you can turn to. Just outside. Salazar wanted that pitch and didn't get it, and it's two and two. Well, I, I like the pitch regardless on a one-two count. It's a fastball oh. away. It might have been a little off with that angle. I'm not sure. There you see it on the pitch tracker. It was just a ball with off. Here we go. Cabrera to Johnson and a double play. Johnson hangs on in the pivot and the Indians turn two for the third time tonight. Boy, they got the double play ball working tonight. They've had a couple of miscues along the way, but they've turned three inning ending double plays behind Danny Salazar now. Michael Brantley leading off the home half of the fifth takes ball one. You know, we mentioned, Rick, that the Indians with that five-run first inning equaled their biggest inning output of the season so far. I didn't realize it's also the first time they have scored in the first inning at home this year. And now Michael Brantley driving one to deep center field. That's out of here! Well, I like the fact that they're adding on. They keep it coming tonight. They have scored now in four of the five innings in the ball game as Brantley gets home run number five and RBI number 21. Yeah, right center field, no doubt, or that one in the inner part of the plate. And he gets the barrel to the ball, and you can see Danks runs out of room, and the other uh, Beckham's looking on. It deflects into their bullpen. So uh, one quick run there makes it eight to four. Brantley's fifth. Michael Brantley leads the team in home runs and runs batted in. 
He got a new shipment of bats in today, too. When he was walking in the clubhouse, I heard him ask Tony, where's my bats? <laughs> he didn't even go to his locker. So whatever, he's got his new bats in, and it's already paying dividends. He singled and scored in the first. Now going deep here in the fifth. Chicago bullpen busy again as Cabrera tries to gap one, and that's going to get down for a hit. And as Dribble has his first hit of the night. Seven of the Indians, nine starters tonight, all with a hit. Well, he left at that, that uh, looked like a cutter or a breaking ball of some kind. And Danks can't get to it, so he's got to play it and give him a single. Well, now Jan Gomes is, I think that's Clado again. Yes, he was up uh, earlier tonight in the first inning. Well, I'm amazed that Danks been, uh, stayed around this long after giving up five in the first. He was, uh, I mean, really close to getting out of there. Faced ten hitters in the first inning. They scored one in the second, one in the third. He had a one, two, three, fourth. So he's about at the end. 8-4, Indians lead it as he closes in on that 100 pitch mark. Gomes drove in two runs with a double in the first. Then he doubled inside the bag in the third, came around to score. Now he lines one toward right field, but Vicieto will make the catch for out number one. In-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Ryan Rayburn with a two-run single made it three to nothing in that first inning, and then Gomes with a two-run double, and it was five to nothing. Five-three in the second when Carlos Santana answered back with a solo shot to make it six-three, and it's now eight-four Cleveland here in the fifth. And Elliot Johnson 0 for two the batter. You know, getting back to that point, I hadn't realized that the Indians hadn't scored a first inning either. run at home I this year until tonight. That. I did not realize that. Yeah, 13 games here. This is the 14th game at home. 14th time's the charm. <laughs> I hope you don't have to wait that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be around that long. 14th time's the charm. Oh, they got him. Yeah, he's off and running the throw down, and they got him. Guess wrong. That'll go one, three, four on the caught stealing. And there are two down now in the inning. Avilas took off earlier in the game on first movement, and they had thought they had him down. Cabrera tries it now, and they picked him at first base. First time he's been caught stealing this year after three successful stolen base attempts prior. Johnson called out looking, inning over. But Michael Brantley blasts one out of here. And the Indians lead it 8 to 4.
fan photo of the game. And remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STOFANPHOTO. It's all brought to you by AT&T. Cool night here at the ballpark, 54 degrees at game time. We had a little misting rain at the outset, but that moved out of the area pretty quickly. Defensively, the Indians have turned three double plays tonight, equaling a season high. They did that also early in the year against the Twins. Well, the, the nice thing about it is that Elliot Johnson, who's playing second tonight, made two errors on turns of double plays. So Cabrera has, has turned two, six, three double plays, and then they turned the one they wanted, and the fans loved it at the end of last inning. You get the six, four, three double play. He went into the glove. He didn't have that glove anywhere, or the hand anywhere around the glove when he turned it. But they got it done. Bullpen action behind Salazar as he starts the inning. That 100 pitch mark, and there's a line drive single to left by Alexei Ramirez, his second hit of the night. And that's going to be it for Salazar. This was Adam Dunn. First double play he had hit into this year. And then Adam Eaton hadn't hit into a double play yet this year. There's the conventional way. Let's go. Six, four, three. That a baby. Done deal. Danny Salazar. His night is over after five innings plus one better. He leaves with an 8-4 lead. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen is for Mark Zipchinski when we come back. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com. Check out Indians Game Day Live for answers to your tribe questions. See how some of the Indians pitchers spent the off day. Take a look at the latest NFL mock draft. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Mark Zipchinski on for the 14th time this year. No wins, a loss, ERA of 1050 or 253 and 10 and two thirds innings. He has struck out nine with five walks. Alejandro Diaz is two for two tonight. Danny went five innings tonight, struck out a half dozen. Two earned runs, and of course, he's responsible for that runner. At first base.
Tell you the bottom of the lineup did the job against Salazar tonight. Hit her six for nine. We're five for nine. Oh, shattered the bat. Swisher goes to second for the out there. There's there's pieces of that bat all over the infield, up toward the first baseline. Yeah, that shatters the bat, and I mean it just destroys it. That's how deep he got into that kitchen. He had nothing on it. They're only going to get one. And wisely, you don't make the throw. And so one on one out from Marcus Simeon. Chased one downstairs. No, nothing in two to kill. Marcus Semien has hit three home runs on the year. All three have come in the seventh inning or later, and they've all been go ahead shots for the White Sox. That's coming in coming up clutch for your team. Yeah, no doubt. You get an opportunity you get somebody in scoring position. You, you hit a gap or you could even go deep. Hit a game winning grand slam. In Detroit. On April 23rd. Low again it's two and two. Chased after that pitch. To get the two strikes, but Zerchinski cannot induce him to go after it again. But he comes back to strike him out. And there are two down in the inning. Once again, we go back to the studios for a Mazda game break. Here's Al. In Kansas City tonight, the Tigers have taken the lead on James Shields and the Royals. They score a couple in the third. The go-ahead run, courtesy of this double. Thanks to Victor Martinez, he scores Miguel Cabrera. So it's 2-1 to one now. Detroit in the lead. They're in the bottom of the third in Kansas City. Matt? All right, Al. Brian Shaw is up and ready in the Indians' bullpen if needed. Switch hitting Adrian Nieto is the batter. Takes low ball one. One oh pitch. Swing and a miss. They're telling us that Adam Eaton for Chicago left the game with a strained. Left hamstring or right hamstring that makes sense because I believe it was the right you check here it was the right injure uh, right knee. No, it was the left knee that he injured. A week ago. Nieto cuts and misses. Take another look see if you can pick anything up here as he goes down the line. Down on the dirt. Two and two. Jordan Danks, who came on to play for Eaton, is in the on deck circle. Yeah. 
Zepchinski's 2 2. And now a full count. Well, you certainly don't want to walk him here in this situation. You want to make him swing the bat. Indians leading at eight to four. Here in the sixth inning. Runner going and the pitch is fouled away. These two teams slugged it out in the first two innings. The first two innings of this game took an hour to complete. A lot of that had to do with the fact that the Indians sent ten men to the plate. In the bottom of the first scoring five times. Diaz the runner at first base will be off with the three two pitch with two down. Tough play for Mark. Can't pick it up cleanly. And everybody's safe. Not much you can do on that. No. Swing and bunt. The only one who could have made the play uh, pretty much did. Well, it's another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night that'll take place uh, May 16th as the Indians will host the Oakland A's. Enjoy Dollar Dogs all night long, courtesy of Sugardale. So two on, two out, top of the order. Jordan Danks, his first at bat of the night. Danks has three hits in 32 at bats. One of those three hits, a home run. Two balls, no strikes. Jordan Danks, the younger brother of White Sox starter. John Danks. John Danks born April 1985, Jordan August 1986. 3 0 pitch. He's taken all the way, and it's ball four. Wow, Zipchinski loads the bases, and that's going to be it for him, maybe. See what Terry Francona decides to do with the right handed hitting Gordon Beckham coming up. He's going to go to the bullpen and get Brian Shaw. So the White Sox have them loaded with two down, and they're still threatening here. 8 4 Indians in the sixth.
big with the key key bank kids value tickets those tickets get your kid fifteen dollars of loaded value for use on concessions or merchandise and every sunday is kids fun day out here at progressive field so log on to indians.com uh, slash kids value today Brian Shaw on for the 15th time this year. And he's on here in the sixth with the bases loaded and two out. Gordon Beckham, the batter, one for three on the night. White Sox came into tonight with a team mark of a 391 average with the bases loaded and 32 ribbies, most in baseball. Shaw's 0-1 pitch. Way outside, it gets away from Gomes. Here comes a runner home from third as Diazza scores. Second time tonight, the Indians have just simply given the White Sox a free run. Well. There's a slider. He gets off there, but he doesn't get out there in time. I'm sure they'll give it a wild pitch. It is a wild pitch. But as you said, man, you, 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 you got to risk life and limb to knock it down there. 1-1 one, one pitch coming up. A little bit outside. Two and two the count. White Sox now within three at eight to five. Yeah, base hit here makes it really interesting. You got the big bopper on deck. Out of play. And a two ball, two strike count with two on two out here in the sixth. Beckham fighting off fastballs from Brian Shaw trying to get one he can handle. It looked like he had a pretty good one to handle there. He mm -hmm. fouled it straight back. Hit right at Cabrera. The shortstop bobbles it. Recovers. Throws. Got him. So the inning is over, but the White Sox get another run closer. 8-5 Cleveland, middle of the sixth.
Welcome back here to Progressive Field. The Indians will host the White Sox tomorrow. It's a 6.05 start, and 10,000 fans will get to take home an Oral Hershiser bobblehead, courtesy of Meritech. If you don't have your ticket yet, you can get them online now at Indians.com. You can also check out that promotional schedule and see the other four bobbleheads that you can take home. Matt Rick, for now, we'll send it back up to you guys. Pretty good likeness of Oral Hershiser there. Yeah. Bottom of the sixth inning, new pitcher for Chicago. Another left-hander. Scott Downs coming on out of the bullpen. He's been roughed up a little bit already this year. Well, veteran has been around a long time. Doesn't have the zip on his fastball he once did. So his, uh, it, his has got to be command if he wants to get out. As you can see, he has seven walks mm -hmm. in his 12 games and in, in his nine innings. John Danks. Rough outing tonight, five innings, ten hits, gave up eight runs. Three walks, three strikeouts, and the home run to Santana and Brantley. Downs has done a pretty good job against left-handers this year. They're just three for 14 against them. But the things that, the thing that jumps out at me, he's not just a matchup left hander. He's been used multiple innings, so obviously he's facing left handers and right handed yeah. hitters. Well, you won't be facing him if you if you don't continue to to get him out. Low and away. Warren got that fastball look like and fouled it off two and two. Michael a two out RBI single back in the third. And he lays off full count. Bounce towards second base, and Beckham will throw him out one away. Thursday night, join Bruce Drennan live at the Browns headquarters in Berea for up-to-minute reaction and analysis of the Browns' two first-round picks. It's all Thursday at 7.30 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Got a couple of belated birthdays we have to send along. Lillian uh, Vasso, 97 in North Royalton, celebrating it yesterday. And Hank McCrary, 84 from Cleveland. Happy belated birthday. And Edith Chetnik is turning 93 today. So happy birthday to you all. Mike Avilas with a single and a run scored back in the first. Also swiped the base. You know, maybe it was coincidence, but I just kind of got the feeling the way he went up there in that first at bat and lined that pitch to left field, it just seemed like it gave gave the club a little bit of a boost. I mean, how can one at bat do that, right? How can one hit in the first inning of a game do that? Then he stole second, showed some energy, steals second base, yeah. Swisher walks on a 3-1 count, and then Santana... Gets the RBI double, and they took off with a five-run first. Yes, they did. Yeah, any signs of life, the way that road trip went. Oh, Downs knocks it down. But by the time he gets to it, Avilas is aboard with an infield single. Downs chased that ball down, and by the time he let go of it, he ended up 
past second base in the middle of the diamond. <laughs> yeah. The air brakes aren't working. He's got to go have him fill back up. But by the time he throws, he's running away from the play. Heading towards second base. And on the run, he's trying to just underhand that ball. And it takes him a while to slow down. So one on, one out for Nick Swisher. Nick walked and scored, as I mentioned, back in the first. He's flied out, popped out since then. Goes the other way with it. And that's a base hit down into the right field corner. Swisher's headed for second. Avilas is coming around third with a full head of steam. He's coming home. He's going to score. Nick Swisher with an RBI double here in the sixth. That makes it 9-4. to four. Never make that 9-5 uh, to five, Cleveland. Well, I see a trend going on right here that I really like to see. There's a cutter coming down and in on Swisher's hands. A lot of the right-handers are going down the opposite field, man. They're going to right field with it. Using the whole field, staying on the baseball, liking a lot. Gomes had two doubles that way. Rayburn went that way. Swisher's going that way. And these are guys that, you know, normally hit left-handers very well, and it, it's nice to see. They have 12 hits. Now they have nine runs on the board. And as you have said before, you know, the it's it's always great to have a big inning. Everybody loves a big inning. But it's more impressive when you see a team sustain it offensively yeah. throughout the game. Yeah, that's what this team needs to do. And, and they're doing a good job and just continue to do that. Running five of the six innings tonight. Down low to Santana. Carlos. RBI double in the first, solo homer in the second. Mike Avilas with an infield single. Getting it started here in the sixth. Tom Boschenek passing me a note. I think his dad, Frank, must have phoned this one in from the couch at home. Said that's the first earned run allowed by the White Sox bullpen in their last 16 and oh, two thirds Bryce. innings. Wow. Now Frank's probably sleeping by now. <laughs> Maybe he woke up to have some peppers. <laughs> now he made a batch of ham soup yesterday. <laughs> outside. Three and oh. We love you, Frank, but hurry up with those peppers. <laughs> Santana taking all the way in for a strike. What a good one to hit anyway. Well, now you see Santana starting to heat up a little bit, and he's get hitters count. How many times in that trip we see him down 0-2, 0-2, Almost every time up. Takes the walk. Robin Ventura going to go make a pitching change, but we're going to take a look at the night for Carlos Santana because it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Yeah, double. First inning drives in the first run. Second at bat, nice extension. 
full swing. Almost went into a cup of beer, and that was Miller time, right in that cup. Scott Downs is out. We've got a change of pitchers for the Sox here in the sixth. Indians lead at 9-5. to five. Fox Sports Supports is proud to collaborate with Stand Up to Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Michael Clayto. On for Chicago now. Murphy going to pinch it here for Rayburn. Ryan Rayburn had a two run single back in the first inning tonight. Murph's one for one this year as a pinch hitter. Michael Clayto. Was actually involved. You remember that that trade the Indians pulled off at the winter meetings in 2008 that netted them ultimately Joe Smith. Okay, Clayton was Mets. involved in that. Was a, I think three teams and 12 players. Okay, were moving in that deal. Murphy bangs one up the middle, backhanded by Beckham out of the glove. He tried to flip it to Ramirez, but they do not connect, and the bases are loaded. Well, that's one there where it gets st stuck in the webbing. You know, you see a lot of guys do that, and it's a tremendous play. But this time, he went to the backhand, and he was just going to flip it out of his glove, and it got caught in the webbing, and it went right past Ramirez. So they don't get the lead drive. See, right at the end of those fingers, the back, the, the bottom two fingers, it went shot it straight up in the air. Yeah, almost like a hook shot coming in there. So he's going to be safe. That's going to be an error on Beckham. So that's the first error of the night for the White Sox. Now the Indians with a chance to add on. Faces loaded one out. Brantley takes it's outside for ball one. In that trade that was consummated December the 11th, 2008. 
the Mets sent a, a group of players to the Seattle Mariners that included Michael Clayto. As Brantley rips one just foul. Included in that group was Mike Carp, Andy Chavez, Jason Vargas. They all went to Seattle. The Mariners sent Sean Green, J.J. Putz, and Jeremy Reed to the Mets. The Mariners then sent Luis Valbuena to the Indians. The Mets sent Joe Smith to Cleveland. And the Indians sent Franklin Gutierrez to the Mariners. <laughs> That's one of those ones that probably had people scratching their heads yeah. trying to figure it all out. That's got to be a tough one to pull off, doesn't it? No doubt. As Chris Antonetti and Mark Shapiro have told us over the years, it's very difficult to pull off a one-for-one -one trade with another team. The minute you add another team, he said it gets exponentially more difficult. And with that many players, I'm sure it took a long time to get it all ironed out. Right now, it's Michael Brantley trying to give the Indians a big lead. He singles into center field. Swisher scores. Here comes Santana. He'll score two. Brantley plates a pair. He's got three runs batted in on the night. And the Indians have opened it up as they now lead it 11 to 5. Yeah, home cooking. Tasting pretty good after the off day, I guess. This goes right back up the middle under the glove of Clayto into center field. So that error is going to pay dividends. They didn't get the force out. They still have runners at first and second, and there is still just one out. That'll close the books on Scott Downs. The only thing I'm not certain on is the potential for that not being an earned run, one of those, but three come home on his watch. Yeah, two earned runs charged to Downs. And now the Indians trying to add two. It's still only one out in the inning as Drupal Cabrera takes ball two. Foul that off the facing of the Chicago dugout. Always wonder what that has to be like for a relief pitcher, though, Rick. Clayton was up in the first inning. Yeah. Then he was up yeah. again in the middle innings, and now he's up. Yeah, usually they always tell you if you get a guy up and he's hot for the third time, you got to get him into the game or sit him after right. that. Down in the dirt. We uh, may have had no choice. Don't really know coming into this game how that bullpen has been used. Downs got the first out of the inning, but then the infield hit by Avilas. It hit off the wrist or glove of Downs and just trickled by the mound, enabling Avilas to get aboard to start it. And now Cabrera drives one fairly deep center. Murphy's going to go back at second and tag. He'll go to third. But there are now two down in the inning. And Jan Gomes will be the eighth man to bat in the inning. Gomes with two doubles, two ribbies, and a run scored. C.C. Lee now getting loose for Cleveland. Gets away. Coming home from third is Murphy. And now the Indians get a gift run. And they'll take it. So there's a case where, you know, you always say tagging up 
going second to third is no big deal once there are two outs, but there's a case where yes, it does pay. That's true. Well, they figure they got one. They giveth and they got it one. That <laughs> ball just stayed down. <laughs> There's Murph. He comes in to score. Now 12 to 5. There's that good fastball. We saw that from Michael Clayto and saw a lot of it, a lot of it when we saw him in Chicago against the Indians. The Indians have equaled their season high and run scored. They also put up 12 on the White Sox in Chicago on April the 12th. Count stays two and two on Jan Gomes. Brantley, the Indians RBI leader with 23 on the year. Also hit his team leading fifth home run earlier. Beckham from the outfield grass throws him out. But the Indians continue to pour it on here tonight. Nick Swisher drives one in. Brantley plates two. 12 5 Cleveland. Check out uh, the view from our Panini's overstuffed cam coming into the ballpark tonight. A big offensive night for the tribe. How about that? 12 runs on the board. Looks good from high atop progressive field. I guess it would be cliche to say it's just what the doctor ordered, but it definitely was. Well, I want to see that doctor too. Yeah, we got to order some more. CC Lee coming out for the ninth time. David. Well, David Murphy staying in the ball game now in right field after he pinch hit for Rayburn. 
And CC Lee's got the heart of the White Sox order to look at here in the seventh. Out of play. Yeah, you see him getting inside there on the big man. Terry Francona as a manager is, I think as a person, is just generally a positive, optimistic kind of an outlook. But he doesn't give a lot of false hype when it comes to talking about players. He's genuinely excited about C.C. Lee. He loves his stuff. And you know what? He would know. He's been around. He certainly does. You know what, though? Lee's just a, a young kid. He's only going to get better with the more times he goes out there. He got inside on him, stayed in there, got the ground ball out. One down here in the seventh as Abreu heads back to the dugout. When he gets a little more confidence out there, he could be tough because he's got, you're right, his stuff plays well the right-handed hitters you know it runs in he's got a nice slider and I think once he believes that he belongs up here in the major leagues he's going to be very good strike to the outside corner Adam Dunn 0 for 2 with a walk Dunn looks back to bat. I think he almost lost the handle on it. Yeah, he did. Hurt that hand. Looked like it, didn't it? You know it? what? It sure did. I don't know if he split his glove or what. Look at him. He's He's got to get a feel for it. Because that one hand came off the bat. Mm -hmm. and it looked like it hurt something it in there. Look, Maybe in the hammock bone. You know what I mean? It looked Where you awkward. It. Yeah, it did. He's... Watch how it uh, gets stuck at the end. Hand comes off and look at that. That something in there hurt. Yeah, grimacing just ever so slightly. And then you know you got to get right back in there and swing it at the next pitch. And he caught up to a pretty good fastball. And now look he's going to beat the shift. Well, that to me right there. Yeah. He, he just slapped it that way. There's nothing you could do, but he slowed it down for him. And when you see something hurt and there's nobody on that side of the infield. He just tops it into the ground and, and slaps it that way for a base hit. Well, one on one out for Diane Viciedo, who is 0 for 2 on the night. He did walk and score back in the second. Slowly chopped to third. Avila scoops it, throws it. Got nice, him. Nice that play. was a sensational play by Avilas with no room to spare. Nice play. You're right. There was no time to mess around. It's get it, get rid of it. And he's, uh, his foot's on the way down as it goes into the glove here. Swisher at first base. It's bang, bang. That's close. When you're a runner, you go, oh, man, here we go again. <laughs> you know, so quick. Alexei Ramirez, two for three on the night, two more singles. Continues to lead the league in hitting, and he's got that average bumped all the way up to 359.
Down low, didn't chase after it one on one. Well, there's that good movement on the slider away. Take a peek at what this slider does to the right hander. It starts away, and you can see it's it's a pretty hard one. And then you can see Ramirez smiling at himself. He knew he, and that's probably from lack of facing Lee, not knowing exactly what his pitches do. Not much he throws is straight and that's always a good thing. Pitchers rely on movement. Joe he smashed his bat in half. Close play and they got him by a whisker. So CC Lee throws up a zero. Stretch time here at Progressive Field. The Indians lead it 12 to 5. And the seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Indians sent 10 men to the plate in the first inning and scored five times. They sent eight men to the plate in the sixth inning and scored four more. And in between, single tallies in the second, third, and fifth innings. So five of the six innings tonight, the Indians have scored at least one run. Love it. They're one away from scoring what they did on the whole West Coast trip. <laughs> Which is sad to say. That's great perspective, my friend. <laughs> That's a nice day. Uh, we needed a day like this. I hope they keep scoring. Keep making the left turns, and so does that man right there. Elliot Johnson trying to join the hit parade. He's the only starter without a knock so far tonight. Drives one to center field. Back goes Danks. Still going back. Makes the catch on the front edge of the warning track for out number one. Time for another Mazda game break. We'll go back to the studios with Al. 
Matt Clay Buckholds and the Red Sox can breathe a little bit easier here thanks to this grand slam in the bottom of the sixth inning by Dustin Pedroia. Changed a 2-1 game into a 6-1 game in favor of Boston. They're in the bottom of the seventh now at Fenway Park. Matt. All right, thanks, Ali. Take a look here. Baltimore just a half game out. And even though Boston off to a very rough start, they're still just three games off the pace. Yeah. It's hard looking at standings early because they are definitely going to change a lot. Down in the dirt. Well, speaking of standings, one of the has to be one of the surprise stories in baseball is the Milwaukee Brewers at 20 and 9 to start the day, yeah. leading the NL Central by five games over St. Louis. Well, Pittsburgh has totally turned it in reverse. Yeah, the they're surprised way. the wrong way. Right. They've gone the total opposite. So that's, I think, the, bit, the big difference is Milwaukee playing so well. There's the NL Central where Milwaukee you know, won again. They're 21 and 9 now. Yeah, they're just uh, everybody else treading water to try and just stay there. They shut out Cincinnati tonight 2 to nothing. The Reds had just three hits. The, the Reds have been playing better lately, too. Slowly chopped towards second base. Beckham throws out Bourne, two down. Well, one thing I like tonight about the Indians is that the right-handed hitters are going the other way. I mean, Rayburn, look at Gomes. Man, there's a lot of hits. They're not hitting the ball that hard. But you know what? A lot of hits that way. They're staying on the baseball. Look at that. Four knocks right there and three of her extra bases that have gone the other way and not hit all that hard. Those are confidence builders right there. And when you get hits like that and prove to the pitchers that you'll go that way, you force them to pitch inside and you'll get something you can drive. An error by Simeon enables Mike Avilas to reach. Second error I, uh, for Chicago in as many innings. Just come in, he just didn't keep the, uh, the tailgate down. Didn't get the glove low enough. He thought it was going to bounce up, and it just overruns it. You know, back to your point, though. What did we see in, in San Francisco and in Anaheim? Not a lot of home runs. Not a lot of balls blistered, but hitters just taking their hits, going the other way. That's oh, how San yeah, Francisco well, beat them. That's how Anaheim the beat them. The had, what, 12 singles in that one game. Right. When they scored all those runs. So, you know what? Base hits are good, but, I mean, you keep runners going, and you keep the pressure on the defense. You steal a few bases. It's, uh, you know, the home runs are, they come from quality at bats. They don't come from hard swings. Well, uh, that's a good point. Because I think back to the Santana home run, and while if you just focus on the swing, the swing still might look long, but it wasn't didn't have that violent. Well, it wasn't. He hooking. stayed through it. No, yeah. what he did, he hit it. He let it get here. His bat stayed through the hitting area for quite some time. That's why it looked long, but the bat was through the hitting the zone. And you know he's starting to get a little confidence, and he's getting pitched a little differently. And and, and every series is going to happen like that, depending on how you go into it. But he started to heat up in that um, L.A. series. Look, watch look the swing, swing now. Again, watch now. the bat. Watch the bat stay through the hitting area, not hook it. See, he caught he caught that ball just out in front of home plate, and it was the big follow through. But that's after the ball is off the bat. Well off the bat. Well, Nick Swisher will take a walk here. Two on, two out. And up comes Carlos Santana as Nieto goes out to talk with Clayto. Let's go.
go downstairs. Katie has some more on Carlos Santana for us. Matt, I spoke with Indians assistant hitting coach Matt Quichero when we were in Anaheim, and he told me, you know, when a hitter struggles, the game has a tendency to speed up on them. But for Carlos Santana, he doesn't feel like that's happened to him. And what impressed him the most was when they were in Anaheim, Santana had an at-bat where he hooked two balls to the right and then was able to slow his body down and come up with that home run, the first one, when we were facing the Angels. And he's just continued to do that, Matt. And for Quatero, he says, that's how I know he's getting confident again. Santana takes a strike here. Well, again, it comes back to something we've talked about before, making adjustments during the at-bat. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you got to have your number four whole guy swinging it or you're in trouble. And well, Santana's had a good night, and so have the Indians. Eight of the nine starters have hits. They have 12 runs and lead it by seven. Telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. I got to believe the rally chickens are coming back tomorrow. Why I mean, not? You break those out and the team scores 12 runs? Yeah. Somebody's going to. Well, might... you don't want over to overdo it, but I'll tell you what, it, yeah. was, uh, it came in handy today. For the Indians, Josh Altman will come on to pitch here in the eighth inning. He's got the bottom third of the White Sox order due up. Altman's 13th appearance of the year. He'll be facing Alejandro Deaza, Marcus Semien, and Adrian Nieto. Chop towards second base. And Elliott Johnson throws him out one away. That will bring up Marcus Simeon. You know, we kind of got cut short earlier tonight when they uh, threw up the video of you accepting your uh, award for excellence in television earlier tonight from the Cleveland Association of Broadcasters. But I was uh, mentioning as we went to break, Mike Snyder also received an award yeah. today, a friend of ours, and tremendous job in the 
radio business here in Cleveland covering. And he's called action for everybody, Indians, Cavs, Browns. Browns he's yeah. done it all and well-deserved. And also uh, Al Roker. Yes. Receiving the same award this afternoon. But he had to send a video in to accept his award. He was down in the Kentucky Derby. He's, He's covering getting ready for the big day. <laughs> Derby day. Well, and I wonder what the weather's going to be like down there. That's obviously for the handicappers. That's important information right there. We'll have to ask uh, Teflon Tom. He may know. Will it be a day for mutters? Or will it be a fast track? The one two hit on the ground is short Cabrera two down here we go earlier today in case you missed it I was honored to present Rick for his uh, acceptance of the CAB award for excellence in television thank you for that my friend. Sally Spitz, longtime radio personality. It is a nice afternoon yeah. down there at uh, yeah. Windows on the River. That's a substantial piece of hardware, so you could hurt somebody with that. Oh, yeah. So be, so be careful. <laughs> I will. <laughs> it's not quite a gold glove, mind it, you. But... I have it back there. Tommy's polishing it right now. He's <laughs> coloring with his crayons on it. Give it a little spit shine before you head home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nieto with an RBI single back in the second inning. He struck out on the fourth and had an infield hit in the sixth. Line. Oh, fair. Just inside the chalk. And Nieto on his way to second base. He's got a double, his third hit of the night. Avilas, I know he thought he, he had it. He had it tracked, and it just was out of his reach. Look at him. He wanted that ball. I thought he was going to catch it. He had a beat on it. Two steps and a jump, and just out of his reach, and it hits right on the chalk. It's down into the line, so a double for Nieto. He was two for his last 12 with five punch outs coming in, and he's three for four tonight. Now Jordan Danks, who walked his only time up, and good chance we'll see him in the lineup again tomorrow after Adam Eaton left the game with a strained right hamstring. We'll do it again tomorrow night at 6.05, so an hour earlier than our normal start times for evening games. But a 6 o'clock start, Justin Masterson for the Tribe. Scott Carroll goes for Chicago. One-on-one -on -one to count. Missed down and in. Two balls and a strike. Cody Allen getting warm. Now the count even. Two balls, two strikes with two down and a runner at second here in the eighth inning.
And the 2-2. Now full count. Tigers are pulling away from Kansas City. Detroit leads the Royals 8-2 in the seventh at Kauffman Stadium. Baltimore blanking Minnesota 3-0 there in the eighth at Target Field. Payoff pitch. Strike three called. The inning is over. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Indians in command, 12 to 5. Stay tuned for Indians Live coming up right after the ball game here on Sports Time Ohio. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Matt Lindstrom coming on to work for Chicago here in the last half of the eighth inning. Twelfth appearance of the year. He's two and one with a 375 earn run average. Defensively now for Chicago, Lurie Garcia into the ball game. And he takes over at second base for Gordon Beckham. David Murphy, Michael Brantley, and his Drupal Cabrera do up for Cleveland. Upstairs. Three oh pitch. That's in there for a strike. Missed inside. And a leadoff walk. Michael Brantley's had a good night. He singled and scored in the first inning. Blast off in the fifth. His team leading fifth home run of the year. And then in the sixth, he drove in a pair. His team leading 
22nd and 23rd runs batted in on the year. Right now, home plate jumping around on Lindstrom. Yeah, this guy's been lights out on the road since 2011. He's got the lowest road earn run average in all of baseball, 1.26. Wow. But Nieto's going to go out and try to see what's wrong. You know what's crazy is the wild swings in batting averages. You, you forget we're still early in the year. I looked down, Michael Brantley came into tonight batting 255, and with three hits, he's raised his average 20 points. Yeah, that's the thing about it. You know, at this time of the year, if you have a streak and you get yourself going for a little bit and you have a little 10 for 20 or, you know, a little 15 for 35 or something, you're on a roll, man. You're right back into the swing of things. That's why it's a, you, you can't do it all in one day. Carlos Santana, two more hits tonight. He's bumped it up to 165, which may not sound like much. He's down to 122. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, were, you were starting to wonder, how much lower can he go? Yeah, that's when you just, you know what, just erase the board from your mind. But it's a, a, certainly a great sight to see him starting to swing it the way he's swinging it. Ryan Rayburn had a good night swinging the bat. Big hit early. Driving a couple of runs. It's, it's just a good team win tonight with 13 hits. Chased one down and in for the strikeout. One away. In-game box score brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. And as Rick said, team, team yeah. effort. Everybody had a hand in it tonight. Yeah, that's what this, uh, that's what it needed, a team effort. And everybody had a hand in it almost well, right out of the gate. Well, five in the first, that's like a sucker punch, man. When they, they had scored one run in their last 14 games in the first inning, they come out and punch you right in the mouth and drop a five spot, and then they kept adding on. Which was the most important thing. The five in the first was awesome. First time they've scored at home in the first inning this year. That's, I find that hard to believe, and it's this is game number 14 at home. But they uh, they kept adding to it. And even though Chicago scrapped and clawed to stick around, the Indians pulled away with that four-run sixth. Because you think about it, going into that bottom of the sixth inning, the White Sox had closed it within 8-5, and from the sixth inning on, they've been clobbering people all season right. long. That's where their big numbers come from. That's right, from 6-7 uh, and 8-9. They had outscored the opposition by 34 runs combined from the sixth inning on this year, but tonight it was the Indians that did a number on him. Two and two, the count on Cabrera. Rifled foul over by the Sox dugout. <laughs> Rick, you're talking earlier, you know, about the Pirates who, like the Indians, have struggled early this year. Pirates 
have banged out 16 hits tonight against Toronto, but only five runs to show for it. And they're tied 5-5 in the ninth with the Blue Jays. Well, that's one you desperately want to win when you get that many hits. Lindstrom's payoff pitch to Cabrera. Round ball headed up the middle. Garcia backhands it to second for one on the first and inning ending double hit play. And we'll go to the ninth here in Cleveland with the Indians up 12-5. Going to the ninth inning here in Cleveland. And they're loving it tonight as we recap our keys to the game. Brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Turn the page on April. They've done that with a season-high tying 12-run performance tonight. Danny Salazar burned up a lot of pitches. But, again, he showed electrifying stuff at times with a half dozen strikeouts in his five innings of work. And the clutch hitting. They hit everything in sight pretty much tonight. Yeah, they did. So you you got to hit with runners and scoring for this. And they also use the opposite field very well, which I like. And Cody Allen coming on to get some work here in the ninth for the 14th time. This guy, he's going to get a lot of games in this year, as he did as he did last year. But did today he's just getting some work. Defensively now for the Indians, Jose Ramirez coming in to take over for Isdrubal Cabrera. If you missed it, the Indians placing Jason Kipnis on the 15-day disabled list before tonight's ball game, and Jose Ramirez called up from AAA Columbus. He hit 319 with the Clippers in the first month of the season. Had 17 runs batted in in 23 games. He can play second base, short. He's also uh, spent time at third base and in the outfield at AAA, briefly. He had off-season left thumb surgery, so we didn't see him a lot during spring training. But we saw him at the tail end of last year and came up and did a nice job. Swing and a miss. Cody Allen throws it by Lurie Garcia. The Playhouse Square fireworks yeah. show is going off. I bet they just lit up the lamp. <laughs> it got, kind of threw me. I thought, what, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, that was supposed to go off at 930. I think they meant 1030. Well, I think the lighting was at 930. Oh, okay. Maybe this is just the culmination of the uh, event, huh? I thought they were in central time today. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss. Cody Allen strikes out Garcia. One gone on the ninth. We are playing Chicago, so maybe they well, thought, Well, that's you know. true. <laughs> hey, they meant Chicago time. 9.30. We've done that before. They're going off good for them. 
busy night downtown. Yes, indeed. Big concert going on yeah. across the way at the arena. Cher, I can't believe she's still doing concerts. She's got to be 70. Well, she might say the same thing about you. Well, she did. She is. I mean, she looks good, though, for 70. <laughs> i got to tell you that. High pop. Right <laughs> field. In comes David Murphy. Two down. <laughs> Fans are loving this timing, game, and, and they're loving the fireworks, impeccable. too, huh? Timing's <laughs> impeccable. It really is. This is perfect. Just what the Indians needed, some home cooking. The bats have come to life. And a divisional foe in town to get the homestand started off on the right foot. Adam Dunn, one for three with a base hit and a walk. To first, Swisher will take it himself, and the Indians' losing streak is over. The Tribe with an emphatic win over the White Sox here tonight by a final score of 12 to 5. The Indians go to 12 and 17 on the year. White Sox are now 14 and 16. Winning pitcher for the Indians, Danny Salazar, gets his first win of the year. That's nice. And John Danks takes the loss for Chicago. He drops to 2-2 two and two on the season. Time now for our key play of the game. It's brought to you by KeyBank. Well, it was right out of the chute today. There was no messing around. Uh, Michael Bayless comes back. He's going to get a base in after one was out. He figured no big deal. He steals second base, and it's a close play. Gets his foot in there as the tag comes down, and then it starts. It was a Swisher walk, a Santana double. That opened up the floodgates. They dropped a five spot on him in the first inning. So uh, that's what got him going. It was nice to see one of the biggest thing, innings of the year. The Key Bank play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. It's not a fireworks night, but we've got fireworks going on anyway. The Indians a winner 12 to 5 over Chicago. We've got some final thoughts on this one when we come back. <laughs> 